In this video, I'll provide detailed instructions for how to use Git to collaborate with others on shared LaTeX projects. So in my configuration on GitHub, you'll find this cheat sheet where I've added a third section on learning Git. So there's a lot of material out there for learning Git. Um, there's entire courses taught on how Git works. Um, but for writing academic papers, um, I thought it'd be useful to provide just basically the bare minimum that you need to get a lot of functionality out of Git. Um, and so that's what this provides. So I've included here the basic Git commands all inside lazy Git, just to make things as easy and streamlined as possible. So in order to demonstrate this, let's initialize a new Git repository. So I'm gonna open up you know, them in the home folder, and then space E takes me into the Explorer, and I'm gonna add a new project or new folder with shift A, let's call this test A. And inside test, let's add with lowercase a, test.md. Okay, and we'll add a little bit of content, test, say this is a first line, and save that. Okay, if I try to open up lazy git by doing space gg, then it doesn't bring up anything. Um, there just is no git repository yet. So in order to initialize git, typically you would quit out of NeoVim, and then you would have to go into that folder, documents test a, and you check to make sure the file is in there, and then you would run git init. Um, and although that's fairly easy, um, there's a nice, way to do it just inside Vim. So let's go back to this file. And so if I run control T, then it opens the terminal and notice that it starts me inside the project folder, which is just where I wanna be in order to run git init. Okay, so initializing git, I now see that next to the folder, I have this git prompt telling me which branch I'm on and that's good. And I could continue to run all the different git commands manually if I wanted to do that, um, but I don't have to. I can instead do everything I need to do through lazy git. Okay, so to close the terminal, I'm gonna do control T, and then space GG opens up lazy git. Okay, so now notice there's a lot more to look at here. Um, inside files, it sees this one file, and the question mark is telling me that it's not tracked so far, um, but it's aware of it. So hitting spacebar will add that file to the staging area. Basically it's saying this file along with these changes are gonna be committed in your next commit. And of course we can untrack them by, or I'm sorry, unstage them by just hitting spacebar again. So, but let's, let's toggle that on. And then I'm gonna hit C for commit and say initial commit. Okay. And so now we see down in the commits window, we see this initial commit down here um, with the time and, and so on. Okay, so let's quit out of here um, with exit and let's add a new line. So this is another line. Save that and space GG. Okay, so now instead of question marks, it has a little M telling me that the file that it's tracking has been modified since my last commit. And hitting spacebar will now stage this new change, basically the addition of this one line. And doing C, I'll say second commit. Okay, and so now we have um, down in the commits window, we have these two commits. Okay, and just to demonstrate, let's delete that line and let's say this is a better line. Okay, space GG. Okay, so now notice that the line deleted shows up in red, the line added shows up in green, um, and I'm gonna commit this in the other as before. Say update. Okay, um, so that is a little bit about just leaving commits, but let's say we want to create a new branch. So why would we want to do this? Um, so the main thing is, say we want to develop this project, but we're not sure if the direction we're going to develop in is going to work out. 
So you might find yourself wanting to create a new file or a new copy of the file and then try to develop in a good direction. If it works out, then you just carry on. And if not, you can go back to the other, the other copy. Um, so there's an elegant way to do this inside Git. So we'll do space GG. We're gonna go down to, right now we're on the master branch and that's the only branch. We're gonna create a new branch called, and do that with N, lowercase n. Let's call this idea. Okay, and so the star indicates that we've checked out that new branch. Um, I can go back to master, hitting spacebar, but let's go to idea. Okay, and so this star indicates that any changes that I continue to make will be written to this branch and not to master. Okay, so let's say this is the idea. Not sure if it will work out. Okay. So let's commit this, um, space gg, oops, um, sorry, space. Um, yeah, let's do commit and we'll say idea. Okay, so now we have our new commit down here. It's in yellow since it's on a new branch um, and otherwise we're all up to date. So say that we end up not liking our idea um, instead of continuing to work inside this file, I mean, it might end up being quite a few changes to undo. So instead of trying to undo all of them, um, we can go into here and go down to the master branch and let's check this one out. So I'll just do spacebar. Okay, and quit out of here. So notice that line disappeared, um, which is good. That's just what we wanted. Um, but let's say, I don't know, things change and we decide actually that idea was pretty good, um, so space GG. We can go back and we can just revert right back to that, uh, to that other branch and that line will show up. So let's say, okay, looks like the idea works out. Okay, so now what? So now that our idea is done, let's commit this. See, so finished new idea. Um, what we can do is we can, instead of continuing to work off of this idea branch just forever, um, and you know, creating some like tree-like structure of increasing complexity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge this branch back into master. So to do that, what we're gonna do is first check out master, and then we're gonna go to the idea branch so that it's selected and press um, shift M. And it'll say, are you sure you wanna merge idea into master? And that's exactly what we wanna do. Okay, so it doesn't seem like anything happened, but notice we're on the master branch that's where the star is. And if we go down here, these latest commits include, okay, looks like the idea worked out. So basically what it did is it just stacked these two recent commits on top of everything which was inside master. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So let's just check, okay, file looks good. Um, and so given that all of the commits now exist in the master, we don't need the idea branch anymore. So we can delete it with D um, and yes, let's do that. So you can leave a, behind these old branches if you want, but they can get cluttered. Um, and so, yeah, any, any branch that has been merged back into master, there's very little reason not to delete it. Um, for branches that, you know, if that idea hadn't worked out and then you might not want to delete it. You just leave this kind of dead branch um, sitting there and you can return to it if you ever need to. Okay, so that's a little bit about merging branches. Um, there are these two warnings that are deserving of mention. So the first one, space GG. So say we um, say we want to check out something earlier. Um, oops, let's go down here. So I'm going to do spacebar. It says, are you sure you want to check out this commit? And say, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so notice it says head detached over here. Okay, what does that mean? Um, it basically means that if I, you know, I'm now in a position where it looks, the file is gonna look just the way that it did at this second commit. And indeed, I, I can't see the future commits um, ahead of me. So let's close out of here. Okay, so there's, that's how things look. So if I make some changes, so here is a change. 
Um, okay, so it'll look like I can just go through all the same motions. I can stage this. I can commit, say, uh, some new change. Okay, so, and it's yellow because I'm not on the master branch anymore. Um, but I'm still in this detached head state, which means that when I go back to master, um, since that's the main branch that we're working on, so let's do that. Um, okay, so we have all the commits that we used to have. Um, and notice that other one, that, that new change that we made, is not a part of them. Um, but there's no way to get back to that. Um, you know, there is no other branch that that was a part of. There's just master. So those changes are lost. Um, oops. So let's get out of here. So, so anyways, that's one thing to watch out about. If you go to look into some past commit, that's fine, but don't start making changes. You can cut and paste things if you want. Um, you can also use that to sort of begin a new branch if you want, um, which is not something I'm, I'm going to go over here. Um, but you do just want to watch out for this, this potential pitfall. Okay, the other thing is if you switch branches before committing any here changes, um, those will be lost. It will actually give you an error if you do that. Um, so, but yeah, you basically just want to be careful about, you want to make sure that before you switch any branches or you go back and look at past commits, you want to at least commit the changes you've made so far. Um, yeah, so that's those warnings. That's a little bit about um, merging and, and using Git on your own local machine. Uh, it can be very useful to structure your workflow. Um, however, there's a lot more functionality which Git offers, and it's really useful for both backing up your file by pushing to a remote server, um, as well as collaborating with others. So in the next video, I will go over how those collaborations um, can be pursued.